session, we're going to talk about returning to the element to activate mature masculinity. And our speakers are Sujit Ravindran, Frederick Martin, and Mirko Ruggeri. Some special announcement is that uh, Amisha, who was going to be part of the moderation, will not be joining this panel as originally due to a change of plans that occurred during the planning process. But we, we acknowledge uh, Amisha uh, desire and um, wanting to be here also. So these three renowned facilitators um, of initiations, men's initiations, come together to celebrate what it means to be the mature masculine. They share the good fortune of being able to hold the space for profound healing and growth among men into awakened leaders, loving spouses, and life-affirming fathers. The session will be moderated. Well, this changes, but sorry. <laughs> this session was going to be moderated by, by Amisha. Thank you. It's all yours. Mm -hmm. Well, welcome everybody. I hope you can all hear me because I am outside. There is some wind here and uh, maybe some ambient noises. And the first thing I would like to do is invite you all to close your eyes. Close your eyes and take a few deep breaths. And observe where the air enters your body and how that feels without changing anything, without judging. Just observe. And observe how far the air reaches into your body. And how that feels. Notice any physical sensations without judgment. Everything that's there is there. Feel where your body makes contact with the ground is it your chair is it a sofa is it your feet on the ground and just observe how it feels notice how you are being carried by the earth. And then shift your focus to your skin. Feel how your skin makes contact with the air around you. Is it cold? Is it warm? Is it humid? Is it dry? How does the skin and the air make contact and how does that feel? Then 
and shift your focus to your breath again. Notice not only how it enters your body, but also how it exits your body and how that feels. Simply be aware of breathing in and breathing out. And with this awareness in your mind and heart, at your own pace and time, open your eyes and come back in this call again. Thank you for joining. Thank you well. Thank you well. Uh, oh. Thank you. You know, I want to check in with the feeling of slowness, of presence. And I'm wondering, uh, Mirko, Frederick, what, what words might, coming, uh, might come up for you? And for the rest of us in the group, if you want to put in the chat box, any one word, two words of you know, what you're experiencing with him, please go ahead. And uh, Mirko, please, if you want to unmute yourself and check yeah. in. <clears throat> I have a couple of words. One is a uh, connection and the other is uh, relations. Mm. Oh. Oh. Frederick? I feel tranquility. I also feel connection. Wow. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Connection. Uh, thank you. Thank you for holding space. Thank you for being brothers on this journey. Mirko, Frederick, thank you to the rest of us in this group for being here, for uh, holding space. You know, uh, there's so much. I know about both of you and the amazing work you do in, in awakening the sacred masculine. Um, and we could take the whole time just going in there, but to be focused a little bit, you know, looking at Mirko, starting with you, perhaps, you know, if you want to very briefly share, you know, you, the amazing things you do in Italia, you know, uh, especially, I have great admiration uh, for the work you do with young men and also through the foundation uh, that you're part of. Uh, that service to the larger brotherhood of humanity. If you want to share a little bit about, you know, yourself through that lens, that would be great. Thank you, Sujit, for this opportunity. And uh, uh, I'd like to share uh, uh, my, my passion on uh, this job, on, uh, on men's job. And, uh, and I, I work on two levels, one with uh, adults, could be uh, young men, men, uh, and also on uh, parenthood. And uh, the, with this job, uh, I put my service uh, on uh, uh, awakening uh, men from uh, uh, speed, the speed of life. And uh, because sometimes, you know, we are, people are transported on their life. And uh, just uh, we thought before just to slow down a little bit uh, and do this uh, uh, in nature is uh, something very important. Uh, and uh, we talked before about the elements and the elements are uh, great uh, 
archetype. There are real, you can touch, but uh, they are also figurative. And uh, you can bring there many history. You can bring uh, overall your own story. Uh, mm -hmm. Because uh, what uh, I like uh, on Men's Circle is that you bring your story there. And uh, one of the, uh, the standards that are there is to speak in the first person, I, me. So I can bring something I own. And mm. this uh, can bring a, a, a law to go on deep on the emotion, on sentiment, uh, sensations. And uh, we can uh, go out, I can go out from the stereotype of the, the man, the macho. And uh, what is uh, um, many times that the new men are invited to this uh, men's cycle that uh, I, I never been in, uh, with men in this way, in this manner. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the thing is that uh, women are not there but uh, I can uh, uh, experiment my feminine, my inside feminine. And, uh, and it's not polar polarized by women. If women is there, uh, so all the feminine goes there. Instead of uh, by uh, the council of men, I can uh, deepen in on my feminine. And this is very, it's very important to discover the other, uh, the other side I have inside me not only masculinity, and uh, then dance together with these two uh, powerful uh, uh, energy that are the feminine and uh, the masculinity. And then uh, um, now my job is an educator. Uh, I am an educator on primary school and on uh, 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 for little ones from three to six uh, and uh, bring this uh, uh, kind of uh, manhood there for me is very important because it's a, a word uh, covered the most by feminine. I have uh, eight colleague women on this and then uh, it's very difficult to find a, a man who works on a primary school or uh, on uh, with little ones from three to six and bring this energy is important even to them. Uh, and uh, I have here a very a short uh, example that uh, I was important to show up uh, and uh, be the example for them. Uh, I, I was uh, touching very carefully a plant of uh, nettle mm -hmm. and uh, a small one uh, of four said to me, be att uh, pay attention, it, it can hurt you. Mm -hmm. And they said to him, now she not hurt me because uh, I'm going slowly, I'm touching with very delicatess and I'm approaching to her. And they told me, let me try it. And then uh, he went very soft and they said, this is true. And uh, this for me is, is an example also for a relationship. Many times with relationship, uh, we go stronger, we are not keeping attention and we get hurt. And uh, instead of if we put ourselves on uh, softness, uh, on uh, be aware of what we are doing to slow down the movement and so on, uh, and then uh, the things uh, uh, change. So the nettle is wow. not more uh, dangerous, but is uh, some resources. And uh, now every time uh, this uh, guy of four, he met the nettle plant told me, look, I can touch them and I'll not get hurt because uh, I'm uh, making relation with, the, with her. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is uh, something wow. that uh, we can work with uh, children uh, and uh, mm -hmm. And more of all, uh, it is possible to work with parents and so yeah. cultivate also the uh, macho masculinity between uh, uh, parents. Oh, I'm stopped here. I think uh, <laughs> <laughs> wow. I, then I can wow. leave a space for yeah. others at home. Thank uh, you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Mirko, for uh, you know, exposing several of your dimensions of life uh, as a person but also as a facilitator. Um, Frederic, you know, uh, passing on the invitation, the stick to you. Um, anything you want to share about, you know, the amazing work through the, the Firemakers Foundation and uh, the European Festival of Brotherhood, 
uh, all of which you are a custodian of. And yes, Frederick, I should say, you know, you're from uh, the tropical land of Netherlands. <laughs> yes, I am. Yes, I am. And thank you for the invitation, Sujit. Yeah, thank you. Ah. I've been involved in men's work in the European Festival of Brotherhood for eight years now. And it started out as something I did for me because I felt I needed to be amongst men, to feel men in a healthy energy. Mm. Because the world is so full of male energy that is destructive, that is lost. That like, like, like Mirko said, uh, in, 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 even in primary schools, it's hard to get a good example. It's hard to have multiple male role models that contribute to your life. And I, I really felt I missed one or more when I was young. And being amongst men without, without women present, it really changed my, my own attitude towards masculinity. Because I was not the one who liked competing with other men. I was not the one who enjoyed being the macho to have to perform all the time. And I kind of looked at men that way, that that was all they wanted. And meeting men who were really accepting me for who I was really changed my view on men and thereby uh, my view of the world in its entirety it made me complete and that's something i i wish for every man to experience mm. and it's it's an utter joy of seeing men enjoying the company of other men is it in a festival is it in a man's circle is it in a training is it in a pilgrimage it's uh it's a wonderful thing to experience men relaxing in being themselves instead of having to be something that the world wants them to be Aho. Oh, wow. Aho. Wow. Thank you. Oh, wow. You know, uh, uh, listening to both of you, you know, now for the 10,500th time again, you know, uh, I, I'm inspired. I'm honored by your authenticity, your realness. And how that relates to our own journey of uh, deconstruction, of uh, authenticity, of uh, a ripping off that mask, of um, de-armoring. And you both embody that as a, as a, as a standard of the mature masculine. You know. 
uh, showing up with that vulnerability, but not just in the sad aspects, but also in the unbridled joy, you know, the, the silliness with which you can show up uh, together. And yes, that's one of the things I do cherish so much about uh, uh, this journey of deconditioning, of returning to the sacred masculine, that realness, that authenticity. And I also have to throw something else in here. You know, Frederic, when you were taking us through the recentering, that grounding little practice, returning to the elements, one of the words that stood with me was embodiment. Um, being in the body, especially in a world where many brothers around us are conditioned to be in the head, also many women for that reason, um, and all genders, um, or the expectations being that of being cerebral and the practice that you took us through it was very revelatory for me you know just reconnecting with the air the earth the elements again as a as in the in these sacred circles the sacred brotherhood these councils uh, of the mature masculine embodiment playing a great, great role, being everything about these circles. Um, and I want to bounce that thought of embodiment that you triggered in me, Frederic, to both of you, Mirko and Frederic. You know, uh, um, uh, you know, why you feel that embodiment is very, very key for men to return to greatness and how you feel you are doing that for the larger brotherhood of humanity in your practices, you know, very briefly. And uh, I also want to uh, put the, the invitation out to the larger group here. Huh? So please, any observations, whether it is a trigger, a hurt, a vulnerability or a celebration uh, that's coming up for you in the, in the form of an observation or a question, please don't hesitate to put it in the chat box. And Mirko, Frederick, please, on embodiment, anything that's coming up for you in no particular order. Thank you, Sujit. When you talk about embodiment and when I think of the lack of embodiment I have experienced in my life and I know that many men do, I, I immediately think, think of anger mm -hmm. because anger needs to be embodied otherwise it will grow to be something very unhealthy and destructive wow oh if you're angry and it stays up here in your head it will get worse and it will get worse very dangerously that's why there are so many men in prison because they do not know how to, in a healthy way, embody anger, pain, sadness, guilt. How to allow it and thereby transform it into something healthy. So when I think of embodiment, I, I can feel the rush of anger through my body 
and even feel the joy of being able to feel it because if I feel it I can do something with it other than trashing things or <laughs> people or worse oh wow wow oh, oh. Thank you. Thank you for illuminating that relationship with anger for men, uh, within men. Uh, Anything that's coming up for you, Mirko? Uh, yes. Uh, about anger that Frederick mentioned before. I'm um, all the time in uh, our school, the, the boys, they fight. They fight uh, with uh, certain rules. Uh, the one of the play fight, so is a, a moderate uh, uh, fight. But uh, on that they can uh, express that this anger that they, they are cultivating, and then uh, they are released. And uh, even though last time the pedagogists uh, look uh, a battle of three minutes, said, "Wow, they don't hurt," but uh, I can see how they can uh, release <laughs> this uh, energy, and. Uh, this is about uh, uh, embodiment for me is uh, let permit that anger can be expressed uh, that uh, also <clears throat> if there is something dangerous uh, you can you are not to deny this but let them experience it uh, step by step but do their an experience so you can uh, manage the danger when you grown up you have some experience on on this and um, about uh, embodiment, something that I would like to bring is uh, when we meet on circle among men uh, is uh, in the outdoor, mm. is in front of fire. And uh, that fire can bring a very long uh, uh, silence. And uh, maybe you just need to look at the fire so you can reflect your in internal fire and uh, there is, at the beginning when a new man uh, approach to the circle uh, this silent can be embarrassing because uh, you need always to fill up an empty space mm -hmm. uh, instead of keep the space there in silent and uh, look at these men in the eyes and let them uh, slow down mm -hmm. Uh, this is an embodiment for me. Mm. At the beginning, I was also worried about to, me myself to uh, to fulfill this empty space uh, because sometimes I can bring a competition performance also inside the circle. At the beginning, when you are not an expert, an expert mm. facilitator, and then uh, these kind of things uh, slowly is melting down. And uh, then allow me to really keep the space uh, being service uh, for the others. And uh, I, I collect again to Frederick. Uh, one time, some man told me, "Why you are making this? You are holding space for men." And uh, my answer is, uh, "I doing for me first, mm. uh, because uh, this is important." And uh, before to uh, meet uh, men circles, I was a totally giver, mm. only give and not receiving, and they bring uh, a lot of not uh, balance in, in my life. Instead mm. of uh, being in the circle, I learned to receive, not only to give, and then my life get balanced, get a balance on relationship, wow. uh, on uh, the feeling of guilty, and uh, all these kind of things. And then uh, I'm uh, relaxed and. Uh, sometimes happen that uh, I need a circle and also my wife tell me why you are not uh, organizing a circle so you <laughs> calm down a little bit so then there is also healing uh, from the feminine part on with this job and uh, I think that uh, men need this job uh, to heal himself uh, heal the society the family and uh, step by step uh, healing the world that uh, are uh, carrying us at home Oh, wow. <clears throat> profound, profound. Um, Mirko, Frederic, you know, you live by example. You lead by example. 
for all these years I've known you, uh, you've been like that. And miracle, uh, to something you shared, um, uh, doing your practice outdoors, um, to awaken, to reactivate the mature masculine. Um, one of the great blessings I have in my life is to extensively hold space in uh, Central and South America. And there, I happen to learn of a saying when it comes to uh, the work of the sacred masculine. There's a saying among the, the masters, the shamans, that um, you must confront yourself with always the fire as your witness, with uh, you in intimate connection with Mother Earth and with Father Sky looking upon you. So with fire, earth, and sky as witness, which is so different in many of the, the Western lands that I travel to hold space, where very, very often I notice um, uh, even if there is a men's circle, which is fortunately growing, which is beautiful to see, um, very often the gathering is indoors in the comfort of the couches and with, uh, you know, chips and coke. And I'm not against a chips and coke, you know, I, I, I love my share of chips and coke. But when we talk about, you know, you know, we are here to reimagine education. And again, the beautiful thing is we don't need to invent anything. Our foreparents, our ancestors, you know, they've all for centuries, for millennia, have practiced holistic education. Part of which is how men heal and grow themselves, where they welcome the fire, earth, and the sky as witness. And I know both of you, no matter which tropical country you live in, I'm joking, you know, even in the winter, in the November rain, whenever you facilitate circles, I know you would venture out to create union with Mother Earth and the elements. Uh, and, and I know how that awakens and body. You know, I want to read out from the chat from Salo uh, a couple of comments. Or Salo, just want to check if you would yourself like to unmute yourself and read out these two emotions you shared in the chat box. Thank you. Thank you, Sujit. Um, well, you were asking, how are we connecting? with our masculine through our bodies. So in my personal experience, it has been really connected with pleasure and sexuality. Mm -hmm. And I was struggling how to, to connect with my body because I was feeling also this anger mm -hmm. that, uh, that Frederick was sharing, but not only in relationships uh, with friends, but also in personal relationship like with a special other person so this person made me notice that when I was approaching the body our bodies and she was feeling this anger so I was like wow I didn't knew I had this within so my first step to reconnect with this with my body <laughs> was mm. to to give myself the permission to feel pleasure for myself only, like um, caressing, maybe accompany with, with music, with sound, and get to know my body so I can later show how, how to touch my body to all this other speci special person and also mm -hmm. being able to listen how this other person wants to be touched or how we can like 
what what do we want what do we we don't want so this specific relationship was really helpful helpful <laughs> for me to to connect with my body in mm. this sense because i i feel that um, sexuality is a really important part as anger also um, and how we relate with other bodies mm. in our way to embody a mature masculine also Wow. Oh. oh. Profound. Profound. Thank you. Thank you, Salo. You know, something you shared around touching. Um, uh, whenever I meet both of you, Mirko, Frederic, uh, I can't remember we ever shaking hands. I just have no recollection. I have even no recollection of us kind of, you know, doing namaste, you know. We always hug um, and not polite, respectful hugs, you know, like uh, wild, wild hugs. Um, and I do remember, you know, Salo to your point as a teenager, um, the, uh, the shame filters I had, these layers. <clears throat> um, and I did my fair share of judging and uh, voicing carelessly uh, my emotions without taking responsibility for my conditioning. And as a, as a result, somehow assigning ownership to other men that uh, um, physical touch is either with the other genders and then it has to be sexual or it is sexual and it is taboo with other men, no matter their sexual orientation, whether they're heterosexual, homosexual, transgender, doesn't matter, no. If they identify as male, it's yuck. You know, there's something uh, uh, shameful. And for me to go through that process of uh, taking ownership of uh, my emotions, and nobody else, their actions or inactions, their words or silence is responsible uh, for, uh, you know, my emotions, I am. And taking that full ownership and from that place saying like, you know what, I can choose to be okay with that physical touch um, and even love it or not. Um, and then hug. That has been my relationship to, uh, you know, that de-armoring, that de-filtering. And I'm looking at Frederic and Mirko. Uh, if something is coming up, anything is coming up for you around that embodied experience of touch um, with you know, conscious touch with all genders, particularly with men. And of course, also the question, um, uh, if anybody else in this group has got questions coming up around you know, embodied practice, to awaken the inner masculine, then please don't hesitate to, uh, uh, to uh, share it uh, in the chat box and uh, we can also uh, um, you know, unmute you. Uh, in the meantime, um, just before handing the stick over to Mirko and Frederic, Salo, you wanted to share something? Yes, thank you. <laughs> just a quick uh, story that I had uh, about this touching my other masculine body. Um, when I was living in Argentina a few years ago, yeah. the first time that I went there, I was going to rent a house and this man came and he wants to kiss me in the cheek because that's how they <laughs> say hi. Yeah. And I jumped <laughs> like a cat. I was jumping <laughs> away from him and I was like, what is going on? <laughs> 
So it was uh, for me like a nice experience because I, I stayed there for four years in Argentina and I was at the end like really happy to be able to to have this connection, this uh, closeness that I was having with women, but also with men. So when I come back to my country, mm. I was trying to do the same with my friends. Some of them didn't like it, but I, I do really miss that. And sometimes mm. when I get with friends that were in Argentina too, mm. I know that I am able to have this connection. Like if I want to keep them, it's like awesome. And it's, it's beautiful because like, I, I really love you, boy. And it's like oh. amazing, amazing to have this this connection too. Amen. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, and you know, it doesn't have to be sexual. You know, it's just uh, an exchange of affection. Um, lovely. Thank you for sharing that. I know, Salo, towards the end of uh, this conversation, you also have a question around how to practically take this education. Uh, further forward and we can create the opportunity for that question in a few minutes uh, Mirko, Frederick anything that is kind of just shooting out of you, go for it uh, I take the stick because uh, something came out and it uh, uh -huh. was uh, uh, the first time uh, I met uh, the men's circle uh, was uh, a cold November here in Italy mm -hmm. and then these men barefoot uh, uh hugging together and said oh my where am i <laughs> here <laughs> and uh, and then i understood that uh, to uh, subtract the shoes subtract the warm clothes uh, stay on unconformity not conformity uh, mm. stay really uh, out of the comfort zone is something that for me was uh, uh, really uh, important for my job in, mascul in uh, mature masculinity. And this came out from the, my body, a, a body discomfort uh, that uh, take out uh, uh, the continuous uh, brainstorming in my head uh, and then uh, stay present at the moment. And uh, let me think and realize what I want on my life, what is my purpose. and. Uh, also because uh, also before uh, Frederick uh, mentioned the pilgrimage and the pilgrimage eight days uh, working with men stay between men uh, and bring to me very important question that really I never uh, had uh, the opportunity to to manage to mm -hmm. handle uh, because of I was uh, transported by day by day life and then uh, slow down and then uh, what is my uh, full potential what is my potential where is, mm. my, where is my purpose in this life? And uh, I said, oh, oh my God, something happened to me. And uh, I stopped. And then uh, my life changed uh, after this uh, meeting with, with men. And then uh, I, can, uh, I can be an example for my children. I'm a father too. And mm. uh, I decided to quit my job uh, in... Uh, in companies and uh, be an educator to have more time to be with them and uh, uh, I led I let apart all the things of money and so on and the retirement uh, and uh, I want to be at the, the present now uh, now they my son and my daughter they need me uh, and then uh, later I can do something else but uh, what is important now for me for my family, for my relationships, for my uh, community, what I can do. And um, these are uh, some questions that uh, uh, is important to bring to young people, to young men and women. Mm. Uh, they don't have a right of passage where these questions are made. Uh, but uh, uh, this question came to me that I was 38. And sometimes uh, my thought is, what? if this came to me when I was 18 or 16 mm. years old, uh, things change. And uh, I can uh, show, I can, uh, I, can, I can see now on these uh, children that uh, I have in my school that uh, they are not mm. training only on cognitive, uh, but also on feelings, on sentiment, intuition, something yeah. that is very important that we live apart. And uh, I can feel that it is different because uh, they have a woman and a man that they work 
on their self first. And this is fundamental when you are the mentor of little kids because you cannot uh, uh, bring your problem to them. You can let them uh, uh, heal uh, your problem when you was a child. You cannot do this. So you, can, you have to work first on yourself, solve your problems and uh, when you was a child, and then be in service for them. And this is very important, I think, on uh, new education, uh, that uh, all the educators, first, they can do internal job, uh, solve the big question, and then be open for the, the children. Mm. Aho. 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 Beautifully said. Thank you. Uh, Frederic, anything that's coming up for you on this? Uh... Yes, there is. Um, first thing I noticed when I joined men who came together in a conscious, mature, masculine way, I felt safe. Mm. And I felt safe on a lot of different layers. I felt physically safe because it made me aware that these men were not there to hurt me physically or abuse me physically. They were not there to hurt me emotionally or to compete with me mentally. they did not feel as a threat so mm. it created a lot of safety for me and gaining that sense of safety around men also made me realize that i can feel safe around everybody women included which i didn't mm. because there were old ideas of who I should be, what I should do. Mm. And they slowly fell apart. They slowly went away, these old ideas. So it, I, I gained a lot of safety in, in, in all kinds of ways. And I think that's the, the way we do it, outdoors, connected to nature, connected to the earth, to the water. There's always a fire. There's always air. It, it makes, uh, maybe subconsciously, makes us all realize that we are equal because we all feel the same cold or the same warmth we are all carried by the same ground we can all feel the sand slipping through our fingers we don't differ we may experience it in another way but we all can simply do these simple things And sometimes these elements even challenge us to work together. Like today, I have a few horses and there is stuff growing on the land that should not be there. So today a few men came together and we started just getting rid of the of the weed and doing it together made it yeah it made me feel more powerful more connected when you're when you're battling earth or when you're looking at the fire 
it's 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 much more simple mm. i've experienced uh, uh boys who were on their phone 90 percent of the times and when they join the fire the phone disappears amen yeah because they connect to the elements that they all carry inside them it's yeah it's it's raw it's tender it's all of those things you don't need anything else oh oh wow wow well well spoken uh, frederick mirko and i know this is not just wisdom it's also uh embodiment for both of you example um i'm looking at the time and i'm looking at salo you know how much time do we have um you know by indian standards we are just getting started but hey <laughs> you know you uh, have uh, uh, other constraints so how many minutes do we have uh, um yes luckily i am going to be the co-host of the next session so we are allowed to stay a little bit more if you want it could be 15 minutes if that is okay with you but if, wow. i am staring the sky just to show you because this is amazing uh -huh. i am in the end this and uh -huh. i am seeing a beautiful beautiful rainbow that just appeared wow. <laughs> so while we were talking so i was like so happy to see the rain <laughs> yes yeah. i just wanted to share that and yes we, wow. we can continue going like Mm. Or maybe 15 Lovely. minutes, if that is okay. Okay for you. Wow. Um, great, great. You know, uh, I I have no constraints, so I'm happy to hang around uh, for the rest of us. I know uh, Frederick and Mirko have some significant commitments. So, you know, can you stay around for 15? I have 10, 10 minutes, yes. Lovely, lovely, great. And I'm reading here a remark from Haidai. Uh, Haidai, do you want to yourself read it out from the chat? Uh, or would you like uh, I read it out? Um, I can talk about it. Please. Uh, I live here in Bali, and part of the uh, awareness uh, through this energetic calendar is to be aware of your masculine, feminine, and uh, uh, hermaphrodite uh, energy every day. So every day, I mean, that's the, there's many uh, awareness and conscious on this on this energetic cycle. Uh, it's a cycle. It's, it's it, so it repeats itself every two hundred and ten days. Uh, and every day it tells you if it, it today is more masculine or today is more feminine or neutral. Mm -hmm. And so every day you you naturally uh, it's looking at this calendar and, and I use this the most is because how do I use the masculine of this day to get work done? Or if it's too masculine, how do I balance it out with the feminine? And then also it was uh, there are days where it's better to be neutral. So I, I came to this talk because I, you know, I was I was interested in the elementals on how to be more masculine mm -hmm. with the elementals. So because there are days where the energy is very feminine and and it, and it could be a, and, and, it, and it could be a negative component by being feminine rather than the positive component. And vice versa for for all three of the, the mm -hmm. uh, um, influence, but mm -hmm. so it was nice to hear uh, about how you can connect to the more masculine energy mm -hmm. using the elementals, or rather than just ideas of what masculine is, which is could possibly be more. Uh, I mean, it it is the masculine is i mean they're all embodiment but i think the masculine plays a very stronger role of embodiment when it comes to energy such as anger or energy such as you know just more physical so it, it was 
It was mm -hmm. nice to, to hear about the elementals. Hey, man. Thank you. Oh, wow. What uh, wisdom uh, you have, Haidar. Um, you know, before we enter into the closing, I know Salo has a question and we'll come to that one. There is one a connection I want to draw between two or three things that synchronize together in the last few minutes. One is the rainbow. Uh, two is um, Frederick referring to you know, that elemental self uh, connecting with the earth. Uh, Mirko three is Mirko referring to this uh, unconformity, uh, you know, pulling off the t-shirt or the shoes. And uh, Haida's uh, reference again to the elemental. I'm reminded that the across all the the indigenous cultures, even the pagans of the Western land, the shamans and uh, the, the mystics uh, in India, in all the lands, whether it is the indigenous pollinations, uh, uh, they all, we all recognize that to both awaken and heal and or heal the masculine, it is important to recognize that that awareness, that energy is primordial in nature. That by returning to the elements, to that primordial nature, that unconformity, uh, that stripping away of this office self that we have created for ourselves itself, is the journey, the pilgrimage to awaken and heal uh, the masculine, uh, reconnecting with the primordial self. So uh, thank you for creating that reminder for me. That also perhaps would be a, um, a reminder for some of us here, both men and women, um, to go into the closing, to summarize a few things and uh, also uh, have a little bit of uh, exploration around, you know, what could uh, practices or education of activating and or healing the masculine look like? I know, Salo, you earlier had a little question, a little inquiry for us, wondering if this is a good moment for you to unmute yourself and bring it up to the three of us. Mm. To the whole council, perhaps. Yes. Well, I was I was sensing that it will be really nice to have a men's circle here within ecoversities or within the Reimagine Education Conference, where we can share, where we can connect, and we can go further in these conversations. Because one hour, one hour and a half, maybe <laughs> not enough time. Uh, we will need some spaces also like to connect outside mm. but it will be so wonderful to to start opening also the circles in other places too like the one that we are here during these days oh wow um mirko frederick uh both of you you are facilitating complementary or rather donation-based trainings for men across five continents, uh, men who aspire to uh, create uh, their own sacred brotherhoods in their communities, in their municipalities, whether it is in person or online. So do you want to just take a minute each to introduce that. And I want to make sure that before we go, before we all say goodbye in the chat box, please uh, don't forget Mirko and Frederick to write down uh, your emails, just in case somebody wants to get in touch with you. But I know both out of both the foundations, 
we are doing these trainings. Uh, do you want to briefly introduce that? Okay, I can take a stick. And uh, I can bring my experience on last training we offered. And uh, the other thing is important is that we offer all the events on uh, cost plus donation basis. Uh, I mean, we put all the costs together that are very clear. And then for the facilitation, we ask for donation. Uh, aware donation with, without a minimum because we think that uh, we cannot put the price tag on uh, awareness. So the donation is what we think is, uh, uh, it can work with this job. And uh, the training is a six weeks training where uh, I participated one, uh, the, the worldwide one, and then the one here in Italy. Last time we had uh, like uh, 40, 45 men. And then uh, at the end, uh, the, now they are running uh, around 25, uh, 30 circle uh, of this of 40. So that uh, some of them are online, some of them are uh, live. Uh, and uh, the, the things was the thing that uh, was very beautiful is we had a man from the very north of Italy, the one uh, from the Sicily. And then I put together all, all, all these differences, it was uh, amazing. And then uh, some feelings, some thought uh, there was common. There is a, a, a kind of uh, greater wisdom that come up when uh, you can create this, uh, uh, this kind of training and uh, is experiential training. At the end, you do your own <laughs> circle. And, uh, it, and this put you really, really on the out of comfort zone. First question, how do I invite a, a new man? Big question. That is difficult. Uh, for, more, for me, it also was difficult to invite my uh, old friends, the one that I have from high school and so on, is much more easier with people that I don't know. <laughs> and uh, for example, and then uh, that did, this put you out of comfort zone and the other things, but uh, uh, I stop here. I can go over hour and hour, and then I, I would like to leave the, the stick to Frederick. Oh, oh, oh. And Mirko, anytime you want to excuse yourself, don't hesitate to. Uh, if you want to you. leave your email in the chat box, you're welcome to. I do. Frederick. Thank you, Mirko, for passing the stick, and thank you for uh, elaborating on the training. Uh, I, uh, I'm not going to do that because because we are giving the same training and right. you've, you have described it very beautifully. So, uh, we give the same training in the same way. Uh, and, and I just love the ideals with which we do it. Yeah. I love the, the men who show up men from all over the world. Yeah. It's an online training. So everybody can join sometimes the time may not be convenient but we can work around that i think yeah uh, we've had people from south america uh joining our training already so yeah everybody's welcome yeah yeah it's uh, it's uh, it's a joy to uh, to do oh 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 Mm. You know, indeed, it is a joy. And you know, the last count I have from the COVID times was that somehow we have, in some direct or indirect ways, have uh, contributed to the creation of more than 300 um, sacred brotherhoods on five continents now. Frederic, can you imagine that? So, uh, yeah, uh, uh, that's very gratifying to imagine that. And uh, there was a question in the chat box. Um, where else um, can you find more about these practices? Um, 
I think um, offline we can tackle that on Facebook, I believe, at, at least according to my experience, you know, at the European level, um, much more at, in detail at the Dutch and Italian levels, I believe, on Facebook, there's a lot of activities uh, or announcements or uh, conversations around this. Um, the websites of the two foundations that um, Mirko and Frederick, your custodians of, along with many other brothers, uh, there are calendars there too. Uh, the personal pages of yours, same. Um, you guys post, all of us. In fact, I look at the postings. Uh, majority of the men's events are evangelized and promoted by uh, women and people of other genders. Um, simply because they are powerful, uh, uh, non-judgmental, um, very allowing allies, partners. So uh, I see all these events uh, uh, being announced through uh, the, the sisters uh, around us. So that's kind of uh, at a very high level, some places. And then the emails are there if you want to send an email for us to guide you to any of these platforms. Uh, am I missing anything now, uh, Mirko, Frederick, before we do uh, a brief closing? No. Salo, are we complete to do a, a round of checkouts? Lovely. In which case, I'm happy to invite you all to join us for a moment with your eyes closed with your shoulders relaxed and with your attention gently upon your chest and abdomen region. And notice all the sensations in that region. Our grossest sensations expressed around the chest and abdomen. Observe. And breathe deeply into your chest and abdomen region. and connect with one emotion or experience from in that region from the last one hour of sharing this space together. One emotion or experience with him. And hold that word in your awareness. Inhale deeply again. And as you slowly exhale, come back into this time and space. And share your word. You can unmute yourself or... You can share your word in the chat box, whichever works for you. Uh -huh. For me, it's joy. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And I'm reading sadness, delight connection, gratitude, darkness of doubts. Wow. 
And I want to check out with gratitude for this uh, one hour spent together and big hugs to all of you. A heart to heart hug. Thank you. Ciao, ciao. Bye bye. Big hugs. Ciao. To be continued. See you. Yes. Soon. Ciao, ciao. <laughs> ciao. Thank you.